Cheers to not buying shitty products that we regret. Alright, so today we are de-influencing. So these are things that I do not recommend you buy. I feel like I de-influence in pretty much every single video because there's, you know, good things I want to recommend to you, but then I also want you to know what not to buy and what not to waste your money on. These are a lot of the more like recent launches compiled into one main video of what not to buy. But this de-influencing video has been going around the YouTubes. I've seen a bunch of people I follow do this video. I will try and find the original one and link it down below, whoever started the, the term de-influencing, because this video has been around for like a long time. It's basically like a what not to buy, you know, what high-end makeup not to buy, just with a catchier title. <laughs> I'm gonna leave my past videos like this linked down below if you want to know more of my recommendations of what not to spend your money on. I have like buy this not that kind of videos like high-end products that aren't worth the money so those will be linked down below in the description box. Also I just need you to see what I'm looking at right now. I'm in New York City filming this with my mom and grandma and my grandma's best friend. A vlog will be coming but look at this friggin view. Okay this is where I'm filming right now. <laughs> Unreal. All right, let me bring up my list here. As I was on the plane, I was thinking through all this stuff and like looking at videos and thinking through what I just really think you should skip on. So here we go. First off is a new highlighter. This is by Cali Ray. It's the highlight in the shade Starlit Beach. A lot of their products have really good reviews and the ones that I've tried so far, I'm not like super impressed by. I actually have another one of their products on this list we'll talk about, but this is the highlighter. And here's the thing. It's not necessarily like, it's not a bad, product. I just think there are so many other highlighters out there, like drugstore highlighters, high-end, both that just have like less texture to them. If you like, you know, an intense, intense, frosty kind of highlight, it's pretty, I would compare this to like the Ofra formula where it's very intense. It's almost like an eyeshadow. It's not going to be flattering over textured skin. It's very much like bang. Like there are other bang highlighters, you know, like very intense ones that do sit better over textured skin and that just don't have this. I don't know. There's something about this that every time I put it on, I'm like, oof, I don't, I don't love this. It's also the color for me is like too much of an icy pink. I personally like a little bit more of like a warm pink. This one's very like cool toned icy pink. I would use this as eyeshadow. Next up we have the new KVB. I still cannot freaking remember if this is KVD or KVB. They've changed it. I think you could skip on both of the KVD foundations, like both the Apple Bomb. That was one of the most, I feel like, hyped up products that was just like just did not live up to the hype in my opinion. I have a whole foundation review on that foundation if you want to see it, but the newer launch is their KVD Apple Liquid Foundation. It's $42, supposed to be full coverage, transfer resistant. It is full coverage, it has a ton of coverage, but it looks just very makeup-y and like cakey on my skin. And it's not one of those products, like some foundations like that, you can kind of sheer out, a little bit goes a long way. In order to sheer this out, you would have to mix this in with like a moisturizer or some kind of, you know, more liquidy luminous primer to kind of be able to sheer it out. You can see it sitting on the skin, especially if you have textured skin. It has high coverage, but there are other super high coverage foundations that don't give that look, so. This one's a no. So the House Labs bronzer and actually blush. I love the House Labs highlighter, but so far that's the only powder product from House Labs that I really love. The bronzer, very patchy. I talked about this in a recent, I think it was Speed Reviews or my Raves and Rejects video, but just looks very patchy on my skin and it almost has this like a little bit too moisturized of a powder feel where I think that's what makes it difficult to blend out is it almost like sticks a little bit too much. It is, I would say like more buildable. It's like a buildable kind of bronzer. so not gonna be super pigmented off the bat. I love the packaging of it, but this one just did not work for me. There are better powder bronzer formulas out there. And then the blush, I have the like bright, bright pink shade. This one to me, it might just be on my skin tone. It looks like you're a kid playing with makeup. You know what I mean? It's just like a little bit too much, but also the feel of it reminds me of like an old school CoverGirl blush before they, you know, came out with better formulas. But years ago, it just reminds me of like a super pink, like your grandma's makeup kind of thing. And it's just very chalky and very powdery. And I also found that you have to be like fully powdered underneath in order for this to blend okay. And I just feel like I had to like blend more than I would like with this. It is very pigmented, but again, could just be on my skin tone. This might look great on deeper skin tones because it is so pigmented, regardless of the shade, like just a little bit too powdery chalky feeling in my opinion. 
All right, the other Kelly Ray product. So the Kelly Ray Blurring Primer. For me, this did like no blurring, so I'm a little confused. I don't know, I have textured skin and I have pores, so I can like really, I feel like, see a difference with certain blurring primers. Like when they're effective, it's noticeable. And if they're not effective, it's a very clear no for me. Like it just doesn't do enough blurring compared to some other primers I have. I talked about in my last Raisin Rejects video, my like current favorite blurring primer and this drugstore. This isn't an influencing video, so I'm trying not to mention the things I like, but it's hard because if I don't like something, I want to like recommend something better. A lot of high-end primers and drugstore, I mean, it's hard to find good blurring primers. I feel like I've talked about this a weird amount lately, but it is just hard to find good blurring primers. Most of them aren't actually blurring. I could also throw in here the Huda Beauty Blurish Jam, that one also does not do enough blurring for me. And again, just better drugstore ones out there. Next up we have the Laura Mercier Loose Powder. This is one of those powders that has been popular for years. And I'm actually curious, if you're someone who like years ago loved this powder and this was like your holy grail powder, do you still use it today? Or, and have you tested other powders since then that you find to be better? Because for me, this was just one of those powders that I never really understood the hype. For me, loose powders, especially translucent loose powders, a lot of the times, like most of the time, take away the coverage of whatever I have underneath, whether it's concealer, foundation, like as soon as I put them on, no matter how I apply it, sponge, brush, whatever, it just takes away the coverage underneath. And the Laura Mercier does that to me, but it's also never looked like super smooth and airbrushed like i just have definitely other powders loose translucent powders that look 500 times better on my skin kvd gel contour so this is like a liquid contour product there's a dofa applicator the formula of this again would remove the makeup underneath and a lot of like liquid bronzers that have a gel formula like i'm also thinking of the glossier this one so if ones that have like a jellier kind of formula for me do take away the coverage underneath and I've tried the Glossier on like no makeup to see if I like it that way just like warming up my face and again it just doesn't quite do it for me so I guess because <laughs> Glossier is in here too. The Glossier and, and the KVD gel contour both I think you could pass on. Next up the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing <laughs> Tinted Lip Balm. These are the Lawless Tinted Balms. These were in one of my recent speed reviews. I'm like a big tinted balm gal right now. Tinted lip oils is like pretty much all I'm wearing. Today I have on Makeup Forever Weber Walnut Liner with Pink Glow by Makeup by Mara. This is like a tinted balm. And I've tried so many of these formulas and just comparing them to the Lawless. The Lawless is like down here and the other ones are up here, drugstore or high end. They almost make my lips look like a little bit worse. They're just not like plumping enough. They're not smoothing enough and they're not moisturizing enough in my opinion, which is weird because I love the Lawless glosses. Those are incredible. Those look super plumping, very pretty. Love the feel of them. The tinted balms just really don't don't do it for me. The Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops Serum. These have like blown up from TikTok. First of all, very scented. In general, I feel like a lot of Glow Recipes products are just not my thing as far as like the scent really. It's really the scent that turns me off. They're like very fruity, very candy smelling, just like they're a lot. The Dew Drops though, the serum, I mean, you can pretty much swap it out for any kind of serum. The effect that it gives is like very similar actually to my favorite vitamin C serum, which is you can get it for like 15 bucks on Amazon, the good old one. That's technically a vitamin C serum. Obviously does some like great brightening for your skin, but also just great under makeup. Okay, this is really hard to actually not recommend things. But what I'm saying is you can get a similar effect at a way less price. And I, don't know, I think it's just the serum effect and the way that like makeup sits on top that people like from this. And you can achieve that with other products is my point. And these are $35. Glossier Priming Moisturizer is one of those products that I have never understood why it exists. It's basically just a moisturizer. It's very much just like a classic, like lightweight moisturizer kind of feel. I think you can get the exact same kind of effect with like a CeraVe moisturizer. Yeah, don't need this. I have a whole Glossier Roundup video, by the way, going through. I tested like pretty much all of their products at the time. So I have a whole video about Glossier talking about my favorites and least favorites from the brand. This is a new NARS powder. It's new as in like the last, I want to say like six months. The NARS Soft Matte Advanced Perfecting Powder is $36. I was excited to try this because I do love the soft matte foundation. I have a full in-depth review, like compilation review on that foundation. There's like a specific way I like to apply it, but I do love that foundation. So I was excited to try the powder. 
that kind of like is in the soft matte line and to me it just looks very a little bit more heavy like just you can see it on your skin kind of powder and there are other powders that don't give as much of a makeup-y look and this is one of those powders to me that I could just see sitting on my skin it just wasn't flattering it really like emphasized especially on my forehead like emphasize the texture the Orbe Dry Texture Spray. This is like a cult, you know, kind of favorite product for a lot of people. What I've gathered based on your comments and is that a lot of people with fine hair really like. The Amica could also be in this video. For me, the Amica Dry Texture Spray didn't work great. Like did literally nothing actually. It smells amazing, did nothing. The one I love is the Living Proof Dry Texture Spray. That's incredible. Okay. <laughs> It's hard to do this video and not compare it to things you do like because if you think about it, if you've only tried 20 makeup products, your gauge for what's going to be good is going to be very different than if you've tried like thousands of makeup products because you just have a bigger pool to compare it to. It's like dating, you know? If you're only dating in a small town, your pool is much smaller and certain things are going to impress you more than others or be more attractive to you than others than if you were in like a big city dating pool kind of thing. So it's the same with makeup, <laughs> what a great analogy there. So things I don't like might work amazing for you. Every product works different for different people, like I say, depending on your skin type, your hair type, whatever. But when I'm trying to like compare it to other things it's because I have tested a lot of products obviously over the years on YouTube. So I'm comparing it to like a bunch of other products in that category that I've tried. So with that being said, I just feel like for my hair type, which is, I have a lot of hair, the Orbe and the Amica don't do anything for me as far as volume. Texture sprays like this, I like to, I mean, obviously spray in like the bottom and kind of like zhuzh it up, but also I personally like to use it on the top because because my hair is thicker, it kind of like falls heavier on the top of my head and I do like volume up here. So with the Living Proof one, I can spray it on my roots and like zhuzh it in and it does a really nice job of like, actually adding volume and texture up there, the Dyson Airwrap. I do think, especially now with like, I wanna try the Shark Styler for sure, there are just other products on the market that are like half the price now that I've seen give like a very similar look to Dyson. But besides that, even when I am, like I don't bring it with me traveling right now, but even when I'm back in San Diego and like I was there for two months, I don't think I used the Dyson once. It just is like, in my mind, it's like this whole project where it's like, all right, gotta put on one attachment and then it takes a long time for me in my hair. And then the end result is never as good <laughs> as if I just use my like hot tools round brush and that's one tool and way cheaper and it lasts better. Like the Dyson for me, the style just does not hold. I have a whole video on the Dyson, by the way, a whole in-depth review. So like I have, especially when I had longer hair, I liked the look that it gave. There's just like too many cons for me that I just don't, yeah, I just don't think it's worth it. I do want to try the shark one though. So let me know if you guys have tried that. Makeup by Mario Foundation. Recently did like a six in one foundation review video, talked about this foundation, but this one just doesn't last well on my skin at all. If you want to hear more, you can check out that foundation review video. Ooh, this is a hot take, okay? The Charlotte Tilbury contour wand and actually highlighting wand as well. Let's start with the bronzer. It is one of those liquid bronzer formulas for me that does take away the coverage underneath what I put it on. And every time I use this, it's like one of those things where I'm like waiting to see. I'm like, what's happening on my face that is not happening on other people's faces? Because how much of it is the hype versus like the actual product is amazing. I don't know. I think it's one of those things where like you hear so many people talk about how amazing it is that you believe it's more amazing than it actually is. This is just my opinion. I know there's people who like really love the formula that but just comparing it to other products, like I just don't think it's worth the money. And then the highlighting wand on my skin really emphasizes the texture. You can just really see it. Like you can see the highlight sitting on and it almost looks like stripey and it just looks too textured. That's about it. That's all I can say about that one. The Kosas Glow IV Skin Enhancer. I have the shade Sheer Light Medium Champagne. This has straight up glitter in it. This is supposed to be a product that you can wear like on its own or underneath foundation. This was a reject in my last Raisin Rejects video. It is so glittery, like so glittery that to the point where if you put this on and then you put like concealer under your eyes or like a little foundation on, if you like miss a spot with foundation, there's like friggin glitter beaming out on your face. Since I have discovered that I really don't like this on my face, I started using it because I'm like, okay, I have this. It is a nice shade for like when I have tanner on. No, I don't want this to go to waste, so I'm gonna use it on my body. So I started using it as like body glow, which does look nice. I have been liking it for body glow, but last night I had it on. This morning I showered, obviously used soap all over my chest. And when I came out of the shower, I still had friggin' glitter on my chest. To be a face product, this just has 
too much glitter in it. Next we have the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Buildable Coverage Crease Proof Concealer. This is $31. To me, this was not full coverage. That was my main thing is that I didn't feel like it had enough coverage and it also just didn't sit the best underneath my eyes. I also tried it as like spot concealer and I just didn't feel like it had enough coverage to even be spot concealer. So this one didn't work for my skin. Okay, I have a couple, these are kind of older products. I was just looking through Sephora and I was like, what are some things that either have like super high reviews or that it's like at my bottom, my very bottom of the list of like least favorite products. For me, the Fenty Foundation. This is one of those products that blew the F up when it came out. And it, I will say it was one of the first foundations to have an incredible shade range. So that's amazing. Go Fenty for that. Other than that, Fenty just looks like very dry creases, just looks too cakey and it just has less coverage. So all around, just one of those on my skin that has never looked good and never worked. And then this is very random, but last one is the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Brush. So I have this, obviously, and I'm intrigued by this because it has like almost five stars, like pretty much five stars. It has 1,600 reviews and it is $47. That's expensive. This brush I'm thinking people might like because it is more dense than other foundation brushes. It's small though, like the, the end is very small for a foundation brush and it is very dense. Like it almost to me feels more like a cream bronzer brush, but for that price, you can get a very similar effect with a drugstore brush and other foundation brushes that are literally like, like my favorite foundation brush is around what, like 18 bucks, but goes on sale all the time. Not quite getting the hype with this one. It's also very heavy and like, it's a thick, a thick guy you know so like sitting in your cup I remember it always bugged me because it just would take up so much room in like your makeup brush holder all right that is everything those are all the things I am de-influencing you to buy don't buy them if one of these products you love that's great you know I'm glad you didn't waste your money these are just my opinions everyone's skin is different I just think it's interesting to hear people's experiences with different products and how like how much they can vary clearly if you want some recommendations for things to buy I will leave my last rose and rejects video listed down below but I hope you guys enjoyed this let me know if there are any other makeup -y videos that you currently want to see by the way my foundation today I'm mostly documenting this for myself so I don't forget because I feel like it looks really nice I put on my normal SPF I'll link it down below I did the L'Oreal blurring primer with the CoverGirl Queen Matte BB Cream, and then I put the Physicians Formula, ooh, all drugstore, and then I did the Physicians Formula Glowy Powder over top. I feel like it looks so nice. It's like lightweight and looks like skin, but has this very beautiful like satin kind of finish. So we'll see how it wears today, but, but I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.